I'm Kaitia. And I'm Jarrell. Welcome to our podcast where we talk about glowing through life instead of just going through life. It's a his and hers perspective about modern topics and hot button issues from Christians just like you. Well, let's get into it. Ooh, we're gonna glow through. Taught me how to do it. So Jesus is a very good person. He died on a cross for us. He, I don't know what to say. He just like died on the cross. He was very good at it. I mean, he, he did all that stuff just for us and for God. Like forgiving, just to forgive. I, I think it was about just to forgive all our sins without just, and, and then like, he and then he like he, he had, he had a very good touch to people. He was helping people with everything, and that's what Jesus did. He was very good at it. Bye. That's what I want to say. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of glowing through it i think this is episode number 27 and uh my name is jerrell my name is jerrell connor that is the longer version of my name and i'm with my wife kaitia lamore so today i have a topic um that was sparked by a conversation i had with an old colleague earlier this week Uh, so basically i i really wanted to talk about sharing your faith and how important that should be to a believer um, in spite of how the world is <laughs> right now. So um, I know with the pandemic and the political stuff and the social issues and the race issues and tension, people's faith evangelizing witnessing that kind of thing is probably not at the top of a lot of people's list of things that are pressing i guess at that moment but this past week um something interesting happened where i was like oh okay i'm glad that this helped me in my perspective on that topic so a few days ago i had an old colleague who I haven't worked with for like a year and a half or so. And out of the blue, he reached out to me. And this guy is a, I guess you would describe him as an atheist. He is, he believes in karma and evolution, but not a higher power. And he's still figuring things out, but definitely doesn't believe that there's a God who created the universe or a God that exists at all. Um, So he reached out to me out of the blue, and he's like, hey, how's it going? I hope everything's well with your family. Would you be open to entertaining many questions about Jesus? And, like, I showed my wife because it was like, this is what I dream of. Like, (laughs) having people that you have in your life that are cool people, you work with them or their friends or their family, and then, but there's just an area where it's like, um you see like so much more for them and you're like wow if they just knew jesus if god was just in their life and it's like that would be amazing so i did meet with him a couple years ago on a project um because he's not from out here he's on the east coast and the first time i ever met him i think the only time i've ever met him and when we met i usually do it like i usually say like hey we're finishing this business meeting would you would it be okay if I pray with you? And he was like, wow. That really stood out to him. He's like, "Like, I think no one ever asked him <laughs> that before. So he even remembered that like years later that after we had a, a random business meeting that he, I prayed with him and talked about God. And he was like, I don't believe in God, but I appreciate that you did that. Mm-hmm. Um, which to me is always weird when if I if I have a strong belief in something and someone believes something else and they come in and say, I believe something different. Let me tell you about it. My first instinct wouldn't usually be like, 
I was glad that you did that. <laughs> but um, so I always feel like there's something that God's doing in people's hearts when you're open to do that. Um, so long story shorter, he, we did exchange. Well, actually, technically, we are still exchanging text messages because I just got one before this uh, podcast for the past like three or four days, um, answering questions he has about Jesus, uh, angels, the garden, creation, um, all these different things. And, and the thing that was kind of cool to me is like he brought up stuff that he believed and I was like, oh, I have so many questions, but I know that can be a debate, so I won't even ask. But he was like, yeah, I want like whatever questions you have. Like, I don't know all the answers, but I will answer them. So I could ask him a lot of things about like absolute truth and morality and what he feels about the big bang or evolution and all these different things and he was really candid and open and it's been very reciprocal and there's like no tension or like hostility on it which is always refreshing and rare <laughs> to find so um since that happened it did get me thinking and that's why i brought it up for this podcast is like there's so much going on in the world right now where do people even, like believers, do they even, are they considering like how their walk is? Are they approachable to people who are searching for answers? Because right now, even though there's so much turmoil and the world's upside down, um, that's kind of one of the best times and the most important times to be focused on your walk with God and sharing with other people like what gives you light and what is your hope in life and i think a lot of people are losing that even like christians who are not only not witnessing and not like sharing like oh god i have hope in god and he's going to get us through this but they even are turning to the other side where it's like they're not giving up their belief in god totally per se but they're like i'm all about this movement and i'm all about um worldly things that is going to be this is going to be better for our environment or this is going to be better for race relations or this is going to be better for um our health with this pandemic and all these different like small small in the scheme of eternity um they seem like big topics now but all of these things which are issues but they're all the answers are not coming from god at all the the focus is very much man's gonna help this or man's gonna have this vaccine or this other man is gonna be um, accountable for the stuff that their grandfather did to my grandfather and it's all about humans fixing the world and making it better which any believer does that ever work? who knows the Bible knows that that there's no precedence for that ever have happening ever <laughs> in humanity in all the time. So I had a scripture that definitely kind of underscores this. Um, it's First Peter 3.15. But in your hearts set Christ apart. <laughs> well, I have the Amplified if you want to read the other version okay. too. But in your hearts set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives. As Lord, always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks, you the, to account for the hope and confident assurance excited oh elicited by faith that is in you yet do it with gentleness and respect so it talks about um there are several scriptures that talk about always being ready in season out season to give an answer for why you believe um to give uh, reason and support for why you have hope because that's one of the main things that I see people going to Christians too in times of strife and turmoil. It's like, how are you like standing tall or smiling while the ship's going down or while the world's on fire? Like, how can you like have hope? And um, so many people have told me that and it's not even in the pandemic and other stuff. It's like just throughout life is like you have a good disposition or how can you be so positive about this or have patience about this? And it's like it's all God. It's all Jesus. If you focus on him and uh, and the life that you have and what he's promised and and you understand that and not just say like I go to church on Sundays <laughs> and or I even just go to church on Easter and um 
what is the other time they get Easter and Christmas and like those are your two days and it's like um that's not really a walk with God that's not really it's not informing your life it's not a lifestyle and you don't know the reason for the hope you have because it's not it's just surface it's not real so in this time it's very important to to have that walk with God and to to know why you're walking with God because he's the one that you're holding on to when everything seems like it's falling apart to give you that peace and, and it does surpass all understanding like like that scripture says but I've said many words <laughs> and I know you had some things that you're gonna say about it too like what are your thoughts about this time and, and, and all of these things well one of the things that stood out to me about you Jarrell when we were just friends was your knowledge of apologetics and for those of you guys who don't know there are people who their whole ministry <clears throat> is to travel and evangelize but in a way that brings in facts data science um, and even just logistics that are outside of the Bible like it's not just like well scripture says this and it's like well actually you know in this data in this science in this this so if you don't even believe in the Bible like these things you know to be true and they just like do debates and have Q&A's and all that stuff so that's something that as far as sharing faith um, I've noticed with Jarrell is a lot of people will have conversations with him um, in regards to like those type of things and then for me it's more like people come to me and it's like how do you have peace like how did you get through this and it's more like emotional things and it could even be because I minister more to women he ministers more to men and our brains spoiler alert are different <laughs> God made us very differently as men and women so a lot of my evangelism has been about you know personal testimony what God has done in my life how he's changed and rearranged and flipped things upside down and helped me and Jarell is more like okay here's the facts here's like do you really want to know the truth now <laughs> and then, like people sometimes dance around the information and sometimes people actually are like well I never heard of that before thank you for explaining it to me and, and taking the time to do that so I had the same scripture but I'm gonna read more of it um, this is definitely still in first Peter 3 and this kind of pocket of scripture is titled suffering for doing good because um, like you mentioned there's a lot of times where we might be afraid nowadays to bring up faith but especially because unfortunately um, a lot of things are being thrown around um, about Christianity and religion and being conservative where it's just like putting two things together that don't belong like well you know you know religion and Christianity was founded on slavery anyways and racism and it's like this and the church is silent because they're complicit and you know I've seen like preachers you know teach about this and talking to black people about it in a way where it's just like wait a minute what I'm sorry are we reading the same bible so that's made me a little upset um but yeah when people I've seen um people who want to evangelize and and share the truth and it's just shot down and I think I saw this on Twitter where someone shared someone's tweet and it was basically like all you Christians you know like fellow Christians because this person was a believer too do not use these protests as an opportunity to witness to people like we don't need that we need you to fight like we need you to stand up we need you to protest and we need you to do this and I'm just like oh my gosh like Christians are telling other Christians to leave Jesus out of it like what's happening to me so that is bothersome so when you feel like you're suffering for doing good it's just like how could this be bad how could this possibly be bad to spread love and to spread Jesus light and his truth and give people hope and not just fear so it says starting in verse 13 who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good but even if you should suffer for what is right you are blessed do not fear their threats do not be frightened but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have but do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it's better, if it is God's will, 
to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So in this life, there's always going to be stuff that we go through and there's always going to be people who disagree with us. But I feel like what's helped me is perspective. Like you said, Jarrell, when you have eternity in mind, it's like, so what if somebody blocks me? So what if they cuss me out? So what if they threaten me? So what if it's my own family? <laughs> like, I'm going to continue to stand up for the truth because I am accountable at the end of my days to give an account for my life when I stand before Jesus, when all is said and done. So I have to fear and respect God in my heart over the fear of man because I used to be really scared Um, I remember one of the first times I prayed with someone um, I was on a set of a project because in my college courses for going through television production I'm getting my associate's degree um, we had to do like a final short film and so us classmates would help each other so I remember helping someone on their final film And while I was doing that, me and some other people who were helping out, we had a little bit of a break. They didn't need us on set, so we were out in the hallway. And he was just asking me all these questions because I made it very clear that I believe in God and and Jesus. And I'm a Christian, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, like, he's asking me these questions. I feel like I'm on the spot. And before that, I don't think I had ever prayed for someone outside of my family, (laughs) outside of my house. (laughs) I didn't do that. But... I felt the urgency to pray for him and so I did and afterwards I was just like oh my gosh like I just did one of the scariest things ever and fast forward to now so many years later you see me on my podcast on YouTube it's like it wouldn't be complete without a prayer you know since I started my channel um, and talked about faith related things it's like it wouldn't be complete without sealing it in prayer and even just talking about God on my platforms is such a like that's such a growth from being afraid to even pray for someone in private so um, God has definitely grown me in my boldness and my courage and continuing to have that scripture in mind it's like be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have because sometimes draw like you said Somebody will just notice your attitude, like, how are you always so positive? Like, what's to be positive about? Oh, good morning. Is it a good morning? Is it, Jarrell? <laughs> and, like, have a reason to kind of try to deflate you or pop your little bubble. Um, but that doesn't work on you because you're a very peaceful and even kill person. So I feel like when people see that, it is just like, what do you do? Like, what are you meditating? Like, is it law of attraction? Like, what? And it's just like, no, Jesus. Like, Jesus is the reason because we all go through stuff. And if we can keep a smile on our face and have, have hope and have faith at the end of the day, looking at the news, reading about politics, having personal things go on with you, seeing a, you know, a family member or a friend go through hard times, if you can stay positive, like, I, for me at least, it, it all comes from Jesus. It wouldn't be... It wouldn't exist in my life without him. Or if it did, it'd be way harder and it probably wouldn't be consistent. So that's how I feel about it. By Kaitia Lamore. The end. The end. No, that's that's good. I mean, it it makes me think of another scripture where basically it's like, whose report are you going to believe? Like the world has a report where they're saying, this is how things are. And then God has a report where he's like, no. This is actually what's going on. And <clears throat> if you see things from God's perspective, it will change your life because the way our culture and our world has things in priority and in the foreground, I guess, to focus on, those things are so fleeting where next year is going to be something else. Or next election cycle, there's going to be another movement. Or tomorrow, someone else is going to post something online and everybody's going to be up in arms about it. But if you're not like tossed to and fro by every little thing that happens and you're rooted in, in God and you see things from His perspective, that will change. I believe it's going to change everything in life. And so when thinking about people and people who may not know God during this this time that we're living in or people who may know him but they maybe forgot about him a little bit 
this is a great time to to be hope to be light for them and and seek the lord on what this means because i'm not like i'm not a person who's like everybody go pick up little tracks and go get your four spiritual laws and go door to door and witnessing that that is for some people um but not everybody does it that way like i did that in college for a year because the college campus ministry was like this is what you should do and i was like okay i i don't really want to do this and it's very (laughs) awkward but i did it and i don't think it was bad but i realized that one of the the biggest ways i was impacting people was being light with them and not like holding back my faith not holding back like i wore my faith all over my sleeves like from college super liberal art school college campus to super liberal um atheistic uh animation studio and design studio um, for work and all everywhere in between it was like I walk in the door people know I'm a Christian sometimes I have a Bible but I don't have to beat people over the head sometimes I'm just I pray over my food before I eat at lunch sometimes people are doing stuff and I'm like okay but I'm not gonna do that because I'm a Christian and then people then you start to see people change around you they're like oh I'm sorry I, I, I said profanity around you Gerard and I'm not gonna do that and like I didn't ask you to stop but thank you um so it's like if you live and it's not just like be because some people take it to the place where i'm never going to witness to someone because i just want to be good and they'll see that i'm a good person and it's like it's more than that you can't hold back you can't be ashamed of your faith and so make sure you're not ashamed of your faith and that you're representing jesus wherever you go um, in the way that he leads you to do that. And maybe you are bringing a Bible around. Maybe if you're on social media, you won't be like, oh, everybody's talking about this this thing in the world that's a big world issue. Maybe instead of jumping in the, oh, it's so terrible and the politics are crazy, maybe you talk about hope that you have in Jesus. It could be little things like that. And I think we don't see a lot of that and then whenever i do it on social media or I do it online or i'm I meet someone or talk to them in person it, it seems like so refreshing to them because it's not happening and for me even as a christian and having a lot of christian friends and family i don't see it a ton online i don't hear about it a lot so i think what god was prompting this topic today was to kind of recalibrate people to kind of refocus on what is important during this time and there is there's always going to be some kind of disaster or turmoil or something going on in the world so that should never get us off of our walk or make us lose sight of what's truly important and what's most important in our lives which should be god which should be our walk with him and sharing that light with people that we love and people that are around us um so um did you have anything else you wanted to say <laughs> words about say, say? Uh, yeah i had three points um about evangelizing and starting small because you did mention like here are some ways that you can kind of get your feet wet and start because I think that's probably one of the hardest things is like I've never if I've never evangelized before like where do I even begin this is too hard so what I did and what helped me um first was just starting small and like Jarrell said you can interject inject small things in conversation like even if it's like somebody saying oh like, it's good to see you today. And you're like, yeah, God is so good. I was running late, but I ended up here on time. Or you go to the store and they're like, did you find everything you needed? Yeah. And it was on sale. Like, man, praise God. Um, where it doesn't have to be like, I'm at the checkout in Target. Do you know Jesus? You know, has he, <laughs> is he your Lord and Savior? You can just say different things that are personal to you. Like you're putting it on you. Like, hey, God is good. He helped me with this today. Or something like that, where it can just be really small, but you kind of planted a seed where somebody is like, oh, I didn't even know, you know, you're a Christian, like, and they're your coworker, they see you every day. And now they're just like, you know, when I have an issue, I'm going to that person because like they believe in God, they say they pray. 
and they look like they happy so <laughs> they must have some answers um, but even if you don't step two it's okay if you don't know it's okay if you don't have the answers there's so many times where people might ask you things and you're you might not want to look like you don't have all the answers because it's like oh look miss christian over here don't even know what you're talking about but it's just because you don't know yet and i think it's okay to say well i don't really know that or i'm still trying to figure that out but if i do come across some information or in my bible study time god lets me know like i'll definitely come back to you and talk about it um and, and it's leaving it open for more conversations if they actually want to know because step three is there are people who just want to trigger you and they don't really want to know they want to have a debate they want you to feel small and I'd say my third and final tip is to try not to get into your emotions which is hard Um, especially when people are taking it personal like oh you're just a Christian because you're stupid because I've definitely had people literally say stuff like that, like where it's like, well, more educated people, you'll know statistically don't believe in God because, you know, because they know stuff and they know more. And I'm just like, well, I've been to college and um, I still believe in God and I've had life experience and I still believe in God and I've studied and I still believe in God more and more every single year. But if you get into the emotions of it and then it becomes name calling and then it's just an argument I, that has happened to me before where I've had to come back and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I made it way too personal. I'm sorry that I offended you. I really didn't mean it like that. I know you're just trying to get answers. Like, so I, I apologize. And so it's like humility and respect is definitely very important. And, um, we all make mistakes in that. Um, I have things that I'm not proud of that I've said or done because I just felt so attacked um, by by people in regards to faith and what I believe in and stuff like that. But I think it's becoming something it's becoming something that I'm actively working on so that in the future it's not my default isn't emotions. My default is how can I deescalate this? And sometimes it's just to walk away. So those are my three tips. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for that short TED Talk. To that point, I think for me, like you mentioned earlier, uh, I'm more on the analytical, research-heavy, apologetic side of it. And that definitely does help me to be more factual-based and dealing with objective things and and just being in that whole different side of my brain limits the amount of emotional connection I have to this conversation I'm having with a person. It still does happen, <laughs> but it doesn't happen often. Um, and I mean, politics and faith or religion are going to be two of the most volatile issues that you can have a discourse with someone who doesn't agree with you about. And even sometimes someone who does agree with you still. Um, So for me, dealing with conversations like that has always been very grounded and rooted in things that I can factually present and data that I know is objective. And it's kind of crazy. Like this is more on the political side, but just on topics and posts that I've been on social media recently, once I, I told, like, someone, they just want to have friends, even. <laughs> they just want to have arguments about politics or religion. It's just to argue. Like, once I made it clear, because someone was like, yeah, all this stuff, we want to talk about this, but you bring up all this stuff, so you want to argue about and debate about politics. I'm like, no, I already said it. I'm not interested in politics. This is data I found here. This is the facts. These are data. This is objective. Not for argument. This is just what I found and it's true and I'm presenting it for anybody who didn't know that this existed and then as soon as he saw that he was like interesting okay (laughs) have a nice day (laughs) and it was done like he couldn't like he had nothing else he wanted to bring to the conversation so it limits a lot of people who just want to argue if you stay if you stay away from a lot of opinion and uh, emotion driven things this is just for people maybe if you're interested in apologetics or you know of it it's for me it's a very god definitely groomed me for 
having interest in this line of discourse and sharing with people because I do love when people come to me and they're like I don't know about how Jesus died on the cross what did it mean when uh, he said father why have you forsaken me like how do like is it bad that like I don't understand how Adam and Eve could have children like where did their spouses come from so it's like all these questions that they're answers for and and we should know them as believers <laughs> and, and it, in the in the scripture the first Peter uh, 315 it even says um, it's our job to know and be ready to give a logical defense like it that's our job as believers we're supposed to know what we believe we're not gonna know everything but you need to know as much as you can because too often I see Christians that know less about the Bible <laughs> than the atheist people that they're that they're arguing against and so that's a shame to see and we're all in different parts of our our faith walk and we're all some of us are new christians some of us are babies um but i would encourage you to to be to strengthen your learning grow closer to god and to understand his his word and his will because as you read more like every time someone tries to pull me into a debate or a discussion about faith every single time I walk away stronger in my conviction, stronger in what I believe. And that's not because I'm like hard-headed or I'm refu refusing to listen or learn. It's because the points that I have to research or that they're bringing up, the, the, what I find out about it makes me that more confident because the Bible is God's word and it's true and it's always going to give you the right answer. So um, with that, unless you had something else to add... Well, I'd say my last point is um, the reason why we even bring up stuff like this isn't just to say like, oh, I want to, you know, be an evangelist for the day um, boot camp. It's because we believe that it's serious, the times that we live in. And, you know, a lot of people say we're in the end times, you know, Jesus coming soon. Nobody knows. Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back. Read it in the Bible. It's true. It's fact. So, but there are definitely things happening if you look into policies and, and politics and things that are right <laughs> to believe what we believe as Christians is under attack. Um, the, the America, the peoples that be, you know, there's a lot of people who are trying to censor what we can say, what we can think, how we can raise our children, what happens in our homes, um, because now it's hate speech to say Jesus love Jesus loves you and that there's a hell. So I think in this time there will be a separation. Um, God showed me this about the, before everything went down. This was almost a year ago. He gave me a vision about a bottle of milk. And it was, um, if you guys don't know, back in the day before milk was homogenized, you would be able to look at a bottle of milk and the cream would always rise to the top. And then you'd have to shake it up and then you, you know, pour it in a glass. Um, but with being homogenized, they break down the particles so that everything kind of is the same. So he was basically showing me that what we're going to be seeing soon is there's going to be a separation. Like the cream and the milk, there is a definitive line. You can see that there's a dis it's distinguished what is cream and what is milk. And he's basically saying in these times coming, because of the persecution and I'm not even saying your head's going to be chopped off I'm not saying stuff like that but just being able to believe what you believe and teach your kids the bible you know those kind of things being at risk it's like because of these things coming like a lot of people are going to be afraid and they're going to be like it ain't worth this you know it ain't worth jail it ain't worth this but when you really know why you believe and if you really do believe the scriptures in the bible there will be a day where you're going to have to say I stand with Christ and no one else and no matter what happens to me, that it is what it is. My eternity is secure. So if you don't know why you believe now, and part of evangelism, like Joel was saying, you learn more by studying more, and it builds up your own faith. So if you don't know why you believe, you better know. You better get to knowing right now. So that's all that I would say <laughs> in leaving this topic. Thank you, Kaiti and my wife. TED Talk 2.0. Wow, too many TED Talks. 
So uh, that pretty much wraps up what, what I had on my heart to share today. Um, I hope it was a blessing to you guys out there. I do want to pray over everyone before we close out. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word and for really guarding us. You go ahead of us. You prepare a path. You protect us from the front. You protect us from the back and all, all sides. You are uh, so good, and you are a father. And we just pray over the people who are listening today. There is much turmoil. There's much going wrong in the world but uh, your word says that you have overcome the world and we are overcomers too because of you and i just pray that under the sound of our voice to everybody here or out there listening that they will experience that overcomer life of what you have for them lord because um, even with the world being in the state it's in um, we have hope and we have assurances. We have confidence. We have faith in you that we are not just going to be all right, but that you have great a great future for us and you have great plans for us, Lord. And and I do pray um, that people out there who maybe they're going through a hardship or a struggle or a trial, please help them to to lean on you. And help them with that issue that they have. I pray over the families represented out there. I hope there to be unity. Help there to be restoration. Lord, help people to see your hand change things in their lives for the better right now. Um, that regardless of what the report in the world is, your report is a good one. And it's for all of your children. If there's anyone out there who does not know you yet, Lord, please help them to to hear your voice uh, may they come to you in prayer may they seek you to to the answers to their questions lord you have the answers you have all the answers if there's anything that someone out there is struggling with help them to turn to you uh, for the answer lord and we just pray that you cover all of us and help us as we um whatever if people are listening in the morning they're about to go out or if people are listening at night about to go to sleep please just watch over them you know their need and you're the best at meeting people where they are uh, help them to come to you and help them to be protected and um bless on this day in jesus name we pray amen amen so is there any closing um what is it called housekeeping <laughs> let's see if i remember <clears throat> You're on a podcast channel for Katia Lamore. If you guys like what you hear, <laughs> leave some comments. Um, we appreciate the likes, the thumbs up, the hearts, the shares. Um, if you have any questions or things, you can leave them below. If, if, the, if the format you're watching this on or listening to this allows it. Uh, we appreciate all the prayers and the kind words that you send tia and sometimes to me um and we just pray that if you want to support the channel in any way uh that if you're led to do that financially that you will um do that through paypal she has it set up through paypal.me slash akaitia lamore and thank you <laughs> so you can help that way if you want to do financial um, support. Uh, but we, we appreciate every support that you guys give. If it's small or great, if it's a prayer, if it's a comment, um, we just thank you for listening. And we pray that you guys have a blessed week. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, people. Thank you for this. And um, I hope you like that little scriptural that I just made up that was good. Bye. This is my life and I'm gonna let it show it away We're glowing